Tom Kelly is with a company called Selenese, and while they don't make batteries, they make just about everything that goes around the battery. That's right, John. So, and, and you've got this display here with any kind of cell. You, you want a pouch, you want prismatic, you want cylindrical, you guys got a solution for it. That's right. Yeah, so John, maybe just to uh, talk a little bit about Selenese and what we do. Sure. As you mentioned, we have a range of different polymers, more, more than any other competitor in the industry, o over 20 different polymer types we can choose from to solve a customer's problem. And so to your point, what we did here is we wanted to put together some examples of some of the applications that our polymers can be used in to solve problems for our customers. Okay, let's start with the cylindrical ones. Everybody's sure. so familiar, you know, Tesla kicked that all off. Yeah, that's right. So this, the cylindrical batteries are re really applicable for when you really want to have rapid discharge of, of heat in the battery, right? So if you, if you take, for example, a, a truck, for example, if you want to electrify a truck, you got to make sure you take the heat out quickly when you when you want to pull pull something behind it. So that's a perfect example of where, where a uh, cylindrical could be beneficial. And you got the old 18750s, but the bigger ones, the big cans right next to it. That's right, that's right. The big And the bigger cans, even better. The can itself is actually a, the anode and helps to take away the heat, right? So we're in both of those. And this, this plastic casing is something that we've developed to make sure that we can help to not only bring the, the, the cells together and hold them together, but also channel uh, heat through uh, a dielectric fluid that runs across the top here. Uh huh. And then you got prismatic. Yeah, and prismatic, um, the benefit here would be it's more for your kind of short range distances. If, if a car is going to be used in and around a city driving, a prismatic is more applicable. Same thing here, we have plastic casing where we have got kind of bus bars that we can lay lay into the into the structure as well. So the bus bars, you mean th th these yep. would actually be connecting the batteries together, exactly, exactly, and built right into the the case. Exactly, that's right. Huh, interesting. And, and then here you have the pouch design, um, and the pouch design is is a totally different structure. And you, and you know that many have been moving more to this approach. And here, what we've designed is really an innovative way to route cooling through the ends of the pouches as opposed to the along the bottom way more efficient to route the heat out through um, contact points here to fluid that travels through through these uh, these pathways. Mm -hmm. So really creative designs here. And you know, I, I guess one of the advantages of a polymer battery pack, weight, right? And, yep. and probably design flexibility? Both, both. So the, the great thing is if we get involved really early in the design, in the integration, you can integrate all these parts together um, save tooling costs, save overall co cost of the plastic. Just a great opportunity to work really early on with the OEMs and the tiers to make sure we make that happen. Yeah, and you know, if we can get the look here too, you've got tubes running around, so this is for the, the heating and yes. cooling. so it's really critical to be able to, say for example, keep the battery warm when you're here in Detroit in the winter time, you want to make sure you, can, you have heating capability to keep the battery warm at the right temperature so that when you start it, it's ready to go. Um, and you also have to take Take heat out when you're when you're charging the battery, so that we have cooling and and um, heating capability with these tubes. The amazing thing about an EV, there's actually five times as much tubing in an EV than there is in a conventional ICE vehicle, and we've got solutions for all of that. Five times the tubing. Five times. I, I, the I would have never imagined that. You know, you just think there's a battery and exactly, an electric motor, that's right. and that's that. But you've got to keep the power electronics cool. You've got to make sure the powertrain is, is kept cool as well. And so you've got tubing all around that to keep it cool and heated at the right temperatures at the right time. I also see this connector right here. I'm imagining you're highlighting it because you make the polymer for this We, we do, this is a high voltage flame retardant connector. So this, this plastic can withstand up to 1000 uh, volts, uh, which is where the industry's going. This is something we've been in the industry for many, many years in more of the electrical and electronics applications. We're just translating that right over into the EV space. Thousand volts, so that, that, that's all for fast charging, I Yes, imagine. that's right. Oh, that's and, right. and you mentioned fire, so all this polymer flame retardant too, yeah, so or what? Anytime you see orange, that tends to mean flame retardant or flame resistant. And so this is the battery disconnect unit in a vehicle. Uh -huh. So when the, there's an accident, these battery disconnect units obviously do what it, what's described, it disconnects the battery from the rest of the car, keeps everything safe. Cool, let's go over here because, sure. and, and talk about this, uh, the the pouch too, because you, you described it there, but I think this probably 
Yeah, this is probably better. a prop, as it were, to show the yeah, so maybe, and cooling. Maybe to, just to start here with a typical pouch assembly, uh, the cooling of the, of the pouch actually happens underneath here, but it's highly inefficient. And so that's when we came through and designed a way to take out, take out the heat through these metal contact points at the ends of the pouch, way more efficient in, in pulling heat, heat out. That's fascinating because there's so much mass along the side exactly. here, but you're saying taking the heat out on the tabs is a better way to cool way, the pouch. Way more efficient. And you can see you've got channels here for dielectric fluid to go in and come out to help right. cool. Now dielectric, what, it's, um, it's just a, it's a cooling medium. Okay. So it takes heat, heat in and out of the structure really quickly. So just an amazing, and this is something we, once again, get involved with early with the OEMs and the tiers, design it up front, great solution right. to drive efficiency. And then you've got the big can. What's the number on that one again? The, uh, uh, I'm not sure I know. Yeah, uh, I'm not even going to say it because okay. I'll say it wrong. Okay. But you're saying this is why the cylindricals are so much more efficient. Exactly. The anode is the whole can. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And this is um, something I think is really cool. This is actually inside the battery itself. Um, we make this product. It's called Ultra High Molecular Weight. Um, the brand name is GUR. Um, this is actually the separator that separates the anode and the cathode. And this actually can be stretched down about seven microns of thickness. Which is which really is thin. Really thin. You could actually, this is kind of an older generation. The newer generations, the really thin ones, is actually, you can see through. Um, and the amazing thing is when you get down to seven microns, five microns, it really impacts the charge density and the recharge rate of the battery. So that's what we, we work on very closely with separator manufacturers that, that ultimately supply the battery manufacturers. Yeah, no disrespect. It almost sort of looks like part of a it, shopping bag, it, you know? It does. It does. <laughs> who, who would have thought that that's high but, tech? But the strength is incredible of this material. Uh -huh. um, it's stronger than steel, even you can feel as you pull it. Wow. Um, and the key is you got to make sure there are zero imperfections because you, you can't allow any, any part of the anode to, to touch the cap. Even, even a pinhole and it's no would good. Be, would be really bad. The battery Very would interesting. Fail. And then I got to believe all these other moldings are Again, part, part of the, the connectors and or the cooling. System. That's right, They're, these are examples of the cooling, all the different cooling tubes, and you can see. You now can, you guys don't make this, you just make the material that somebody, right. a molder would make. And typically these are um, really higher end elastomers. Yeah. Um, and you can design it so that you, you, know, you put these little, these little ridges in here, so it doesn't actually flex as much this way, mm -hmm. but then this way you get more flex. So you can, depending on how you design the, the part, you can really design the right level of flexibility and strength that you need for these cooling tubes. Right, and and just for, for so the audience knows, you said you got a beer lineup of polymers, automotive polymers, and anybody else, and I didn't realize this before, Selenese bought uh, DuPont Automotive's automotive business. That's right, we, we uh, back in November of 2022, we closed in the transaction, and it's really the engineering thermoplastics business of DuPont, and that followed an acquisition we made a year earlier of Exxon's Santa Prine TPV business, which is one, one of the tubes you see here. Um, and it's something you can you can see, Celanese has been investing both organically and inorganically in growing the engineer thermoplastics and elastomers business because we see the growth potential that we have in helping our customers solve these problems, light weighting, sustainability, electrification, we can meet all of their needs, right? So it's it's a big part of our, our growth scenario. Cool, Tom, thanks so much. Very interesting what you got here. Great, thanks John, appreciate it.